Good evening and welcome to Dixon Dahl Stadium, Bishop Mies High School. Tonight's Ivy High School Game of the Week. It's the Catholic Clash 2022 as Rockers takes on Bishop Mies. Hi, everybody. Kevin White, Johnny Beck. Our sideline reporter is Leon Liebel. It's crossover week, Missouri versus Kansas. Rockers and Miege been playing since the 50s, but they renewed this rivalry in 2018. And Rockers, in this fifth meeting, they've won three of the last four, Johnny, but they come in at one and three. The hot team is Bishop Miege at 3-0. and oh. Yeah, and it's always a great matchup when these teams collide. A lot of these kids grow up playing CYO football, playing youth football together. So look for these guys to have a little bit of fun tonight, but there's definitely a lot of pride on the line. Time now for the Hy-Vee player profile, and we'll start with the quarterbacks and Ethan Hansen for Rockers. And Hansen's looking to build off a strong start to the season. He's a dual-threat quarterback. He can do it with his feet. He can get the ball around to his playmakers in the receiving game as well. And for Bishop Miege, this guy's been slinging it all year, Mac Armstrong. Yeah, probably one of the strongest starts at the quarterback position in the Kansas City area. Throws the ball really well, 83 completion percentage. He's going to spread the ball to his playmakers and obviously try and make a little little bit of noise with himself as well. Rockers Miege. It's the High V High School Game of the Week, and we're back with the opening kickoff right after this. The game of the week is brought to you by Hy-Vee. They're proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. Cloudy and cool as fall has set in here in Roland Park. Temperatures in the mid-60s under cloudy skies. Big crowd here tonight, as you expect here in a Rockhurst-Bishop Miege rivalry game. As this is crossover week, Missouri versus Kansas. And Let's meet the coaches tonight. Kelly Donahoe in his third year now. 10 and 12 record with the Hawklets after 19 years. Very successful run at Blue Springs where he won four state titles. His team at one and three after a loss last week. And then the youngster, 38 years old, John Holmes in his 11th year, 19th year overall. Just won uh, his 100th game. He's now one, one and 26. Six state titles under his belt. And they were consecutive from 2014 to 2019. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you have bestowed on us. We thank you for the opportunity to observe our athletes displaying their talents on the field tonight. We ask that you protect them from harm and allow them to compete to the best of their abilities in a manner which reflects the example set by your Son, Jesus. And let us remember that all we do is for your greater glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please remain standing as we honor America with our national anthem, as sung by Mary Riley, Bishop Yeh's class of 73. And the fans finishing up the final strains of our uh, national anthem here at Dixon Dahl Stadium. And 
Wouldn't expect anything less as far as a crowd tonight. This is the place to be here in Roland Park. And you can tell which side is which. Rockers wearing the blue, Miege in red. Scott Westerstrom is your referee in charge as we go down in the field for the coin toss. Rockers won the coin toss, deferred their option to the second half. You mentioned these teams have been playing since the 50s. 1957, Rockers leading the overall series. This will be the 33rd game, 24-7-1. But in the new model, the modern rivalry from 2018 to now, Rockers has won three of the four and two straight, including last year's game, 24-21. There at Dasta Memorial Stadium. So Miege looking for a payback tonight. And they come in number one ranked in 4A. They are 3-0, and but their strength of schedule, not very strong. Blue Valley North, Blue Valley Southwest, and St. James Academy. That was a revenge win over St. James Academy. Rockers, on the other hand, their strength of schedule, super strong. Maybe the strongest in the state of Missouri. As they've lost to Raypac, they beat Blue Spring South, who's coming up. They played a close game with Liberty North and then lost last week to Bentonville, Arkansas, which is a highly ranked team in the state of Arkansas. Rockers. Ketchler will kick it off for the Hawklets. And this win will get into the end zone for a touchback. As we check in with our sideline reporter, here's Leon Liebel. Hey, Kevin, as you might imagine, terrific atmosphere down here. Just a beautiful night, a Friday night for high school football. Highs in the 60s tonight. And what a crowd. You know, the Rockers students and the MEA students all on the same side of this uh, stadium. So it's going to be loud down here. So look for a good one. And the quarterback for Miege is Mac Armstrong, probably the hottest quarterback in the metro area. 83% completion, nine touchdowns, no interceptions. He's a 5'11 senior. And he's also the team captain. They run a spread offense. They keep it on the ground. David Garcia for short yardage between the hashes. Tackle on the play by Connor Sexton. This Miege offensive line, Johnny, they've got Schleicher, who's a big-time prospect. Wilson, Montoya, the center, is the leader. A guy that moved in from Andover, Baker North at right guard, and then Dominic Werner is the right tackle. Second down and long. Armstrong flushed. Directing traffic. Now floating it, and he throws it into the bench area incomplete. And you saw good coverage downfield by the Rockers secondary. Mac was trying to get a guy to break back to the football, but saw the Rockhurst linebacker start to break downhill. And Armstrong, smart play, throws it out of bounds, but it'll be third and long here for Bishop Miege. Explosive receivers. They've got four out there. They'll have Coppage, Wright, Jackson, Wing. Good tight ends. Jensen and Moeller. On now third down and long. Armstrong throwing, completing the pass. And... This is Isaiah Coppage working his way near the 40-yard line for a first down catch. Yeah, good pitch and catch there to Coppage. But like Kevin, you were just saying, got a lot of weapons on this offensive side of the ball, so it's going to be really tough for this Rockhurst defense to key, on, key in on just one or two guys. 17 yards on the third down completion. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Armstrong now will tuck and run. He'll get about two yards on the play. Armstrong, not a big rusher of the football. Only has 16 yards on the season. Tackle on the play by Simon Connor. 
Rockers plays a 3-3 defense. Greg Oder, the former Blue Springs South coach, is the defensive coordinator for Rockers. And nothing doing here as Garcia tried to cut it back. And Jackson Oldham, the linebacker, his eighth tackle of the year, number 51. And you see Jackson just do a good job of setting that edge. Horses easily back inside. Good tackle there for a loss. Coppinger and Ketting, the leading tacklers for this defense. Bryce Middleton leads them with two interceptions. They're giving up 22 points per game. Now third down and long. Deep pass down the field. And the receiver can't hold on. A nice attempt there as... Trying to go over the top was Aiden Wing. And he couldn't bring it in here. He had his hands on this for a long time. And just couldn't bring it in. Coverage there by Bryce Middleton for Rockers. But he goes incomplete. And fourth down in punting time. As Dagan Jensen in punt formation. Averaging 43.8 yards per punt. Sends it down the field. Fair catch called for inside the 20-yard line and taken by Rockers. And that was Aiden Ryan. 40 yards, no return. And now we see Kelly Donahoe's offense led by Ethan Hansen. Hansen, a junior, started his high school career right here at Bishop Miege as a freshman. And he's a dual-threat quarterback. 44% completion, three touchdowns, six INTs. Runs it a little better at 6.3 yards per carry and two rushing touchdowns. He's also a guy that can move the pocket, and get the ball downfield when it looks like the play's broken down, and look to see him do that quite a bit tonight. Running play, and Rockers. This time, going to run it with Colton Wemhoff. Wemhoff was a question mark tonight with an ankle injury. They said he would be on a very limited snap count. He's one of their better players, also on the defensive side of the ball, but he's not 100% healthy. Actually shocked that he ran the ball the first time. As we'll see some running backs tonight. We'll see Aiden Ryan, Pete Berry. This will be Ryan, who also started out at Miege and then transferred to Rockhurst. And making the stop was Justice Betts, the linebacker. He is their leading tackler. Griffin Lore is second in total tackles as Ryan's first run of the night. They say uh, this guy is an FCS prospect, number 25, Betts, for me age. Saw Jack Baird get in there with that shoestring tackle, kind of slowing him down. As see Rockhurst trying to establish the running game in the first two downs here. On third down and six. And Betts meets the quarterback and takes him down one-on-one and denies him the first down as Hansen on the quarterback read option went backwards on the play. Fourth down. And you see Betts just staying true to his responsibility. you got to make sure you take the quarterback and does a good job of buttoning up the tackle and stopping him at the line of scrimmage, forcing Rockers into a punting situation here. Defensive coordinator is now Pat Hansen, the former Liberty and Schlegel and Harmon coach. He brings a aggressive 4-2-5 defense. They get a three and out as the punt is away. Spockman, the punter for Rockers, fielded on a hop. And the turn man that time is P.J. McCallop, one of the faster guys on the team. 35 yards on the punt, short return, and Miege will have good field position. They're going to spot this ball. Officially, well, the official has not put the ball down, so we'll wait until he puts it on the ground at the 32-yard line. Coach Holmes gets his offense back out on the field. They're averaging 45 points per game, 8.5 yards per per play run. Here's a quick pass. Coppage on the slant. Breaking a tackle. And Coppage across the 45. Whipped down near the 46-yard line for a first down catch. It'll go for 15. And a 
a first down for the Stags. Yeah, that's what we're used to is seeing this Miege offense. Just a quick passing game. Get the ball into your playmaker's hands. You see there, able to break a tackle and get a first down. Spotted at the 47. Armstrong to throw again. His favorite target early on is Coppage. And Isaiah, explosive guy, six foot, 187 pound senior. And he's close to the first down. It'll be second down and short. Gain of nine on this pass and catch. Coppage, also a track athlete. He's a 4'6'40 guy as Garcia. Well, get short yardage, but enough to gain the first down for Bishop Miege. Once again, this team beat Blue Valley North, Blue Valley Southwest, and got a revenge on St. James Academy, the two-time defending state champs of Class 4A last week. 3-0 start. Is, gets a light schedule, but you play who they... Give you to play. Nice grab on the sideline. Dagan Jensen has the defender right there, Ben Stringer. But the big tight end for the Stags climbs the ladder and makes a nice catch downfield. Yeah, we saw it on the first drive. Armstrong trying to get the ball to his big receiver, Aiden Wing, unable to get it there. But right there, Jensen going up and high pointing that ball. Good throw and catch there. Big, big play. 28 yards, so an explosive play. And in the red zone are the Stags. Garcia. To the short side of the field. Cut back run inside the 10. And be down near the 6-yard line. Make it the 7-yard line for David Garcia, a junior. Which says when we need a big run, he gives it to us. Tough runner, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. And Garcia having trouble this time. First flag is thrown after the tackle is made by the linebacker Oldham. Face back, 51 on the offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous. So it's a defensive penalty on the guy that made the stop, Jackson Oldham, the senior linebacker. Oh, they called that on Miege. They called that on Jalen Wilson. Oh, okay. They must have got that. his. Yeah, must have got his All hand right. caught up. So the, the, the 51 was uh, the offensive lineman and not the defensive player. So I beg your pardon. Miege backed up. Now it'll be a second down and long. Nearly 20 yards. As they'll throw middle and find the tight end. That's a touchdown. Dagan Jensen. 16 yards, but there is a penalty flag down. They're calling an eligible man downfield. An eligible man downfield. Offense. Five yard penalty to be a spot. Still third. Let's see if we can find somebody. Uh... Working their way down the field, usually it's an offensive lineman, but that nullifies the 16-yard touchdown pass to Jensen, and the age was near the goal line, and then they've been backed up, first with a face mask penalty, and now an illegal man downfield, and they move it all the way back to the 28-yard line. And they were just establishing a little bit of rhythm on offense, and obviously those two penalties... Pushing him back and killing the momentum on this drive. We need about uh, 20 to 21. Need to get to the six yard line. Swing it out. And this is Jensen, the tight end again. And Jensen, his second catch of the night, waved off the last one with the penalty. And Dagan Jensen, they say, is an FCS prospect, getting some Ivy League looks as well. A basketball player, good athlete. Yeah, you see the size out in the open field. Delivers the blow at the end of that that catch there. Like you said, Kev, got back some of that penalty yardage, and now we're sitting at third down. Looks like they got to get just inside the six-yard line. Third down and 12. 11 on the catch by Jensen, the senior tight end. Armstrong looking deep middle and has Coppage for the touchdown. Touchdown, Bishop Miege, 17 yards. 
Armstrong to Coppage. Steven Neenan, the PAT try. He is 17 for 17 on PATs. Drills this one. Good start by the home team, Bishop Miege. Thought the uh, penalties might derail the drive, but Coppage coming up with a big touchdown catch of 17 yards. His fourth receiving touchdown of the year. There's the long pass down the sideline to the tight end Jensen, then the run by Garcia, and Jensen a nice catch for 11, and then here's pay dirt. Armstrong's 10th touchdown pass of the year, Coppage with the catch, and Coppage has been hot early, Johnny. Yeah, and you see that offensive line up front for Miege allowing Armstrong to get the time he needed, and Coppage runs a good route. Looked like Dom Yarbrough was going to get a hand on it, but Coppage able to get that pass, and like you said, he's their go-to guy, and if you're Rockhurst, you got to know where he's at at all times. Well, Dom Yarbrough is making his first start tonight situation covering a big time player like Isaiah Coppage. Something tells me that John Holmes knew that. Probably saw that as a favorable matchup on that third third down touchdown conversion there. It looked like they had shot themselves in the foot but able to fight through that adversity pick up a big chunk of yards to Jensen and then Armstrong to Coppage for the touchdown. Neenan, seven touchbacks on the year, so he has a strong leg. This is a kid that's gotten better each and every year that he's been here. He's been kicking varsity football now for about three years. This one going to stay in the field of play, fielded at the six-yard line by the Hawklets. And they'll take it to the 26 by Pete Berry. One of the running backs we'll see tonight for the Hawklets. Now Coach Donahoe handles the offense along with Coach Tom Cruise, the former Ray Peck head coach. Coach Donahoe feels like his team has improved this year, but the record doesn't show it. They're playing a lot of young guys, sophomores and juniors. And he was very intense before the game. Play action, Hanson on first down, rolling, throwing, and the pass off the hands of Mitch Forbes, incomplete. Yeah, it looked like just went through Forbes' hands and almost tipped up into a Miege defender there. You see the, oh, it looks like it was tipped by the Miege linebacker. Let's check in with Leon. Well, I got to tell you, the, a lot of energy on this Miege sideline, obviously, after that touchdown, but... In, Coach Holmes, John Holmes, really excited. He kind of was pointing to the uh, Rockers student section. He said, we're coming. We're coming after you. The zone. And this team has been penalized a lot this year. Bishop Miege averaging 10 penalties per game. You never want to average double-figure penalties per game. But that's their average this year, and that one uh, will cost them five yards. Finn Kusick, the defensive lineman, jump too early. Second down and five from the 31. Rockers trailing by a touchdown. Here's Ryan to the outside. Ryan, a nice cutback, and will have the first down as he gets it out to the 38-yard line. Seven yards for Aiden Ryan. We have a flag on the play. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still the down. So no first down. Is the penalty flag now hurting Rockers? Yep. Andrew Sprague, the D1 prospect and a massive human being. 6'8", 265. I saw him do the walkout. Man. 
feel like a solar eclipse when he's standing <laughs> in front of the sun because he is a big dude. But he is the one hitting the flag and moving Rockers back to second down and 15. Hanson sidearms it, pleats it on the Miege sideline, making the catch. Miles Carson just across the 30. He is the son of Carlos Carson, the former Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver. Miles, with his 11th catch of the year, leads Rockers in catches and yards this year. Nice uh, catch on the sideline for Rockers, making it third and manageable, third down and six. And you see Hanson able to move the pocket there. He's patient, keeping his eyes downfield, able to find that throwing lane and delivers a strike, making it more of a manageable situation here on third down. 6'3", 175-pound junior, Miles Carson. Quarterback read option. And Hanson following his blocks and looks to have enough for the first down. Now the ball came out at the end. The A's are saying they've covered it up. Officials separating the players. See what the call is. Well, they're trying to separate the players. There's three red and one white there. Well, Jalen Wilson has come up with a football, and it is a Rockers turnover on the third down run by Hanson. So Jalen Wilson able to scrum this from the bottom of the pile. When did the ball come out? He was juggling it on the way down, it looked like. See there, yeah, there's the ball loose right there. He's trying to secure it his leg and Jalen Wilson with the fumble recovery in our first turnover of the game committed by Rockers. A good play call there on third down. Looked like they'd pick up the first down but it just gets jarred out of Hanson's arms. Falls in Miege's hands there. Going for the throat on the post pattern and the receiver can't reach up and get it as Running the post pattern was Taryn Jackson, the speedster, the sophomore wide receiver, and just missed his man by a few inches there, just off his fingertips. Yeah, it looked like Jackson had a few steps, and that throw might have taken him back just a little bit. See John Holmes going for it right there on the sudden change, looking for points right out of the get-go. Second down and 10, quick slant to the hot receiver for the Stags. Coppage getting a lot of yards after the catch. And he'll have a first down inside the 25. Coppage been hard to tackle thus far for Rockers in their secondary. Yeah, good toss here by Armstrong leading his receiver allowing Coppage to catch it. With this back against the defender and just want that defender to go make a tackle there but they're going to squeeze out that those yards after contact, picking up another first down for Bishop Mies. From the 23, Armstrong flushed. Mack to the sideline, trying to get what he can. Yes, he was being pressured out of the pocket there. I think that was, uh, was that Oldham there? Yeah, it looked like Oldham had a chance to maybe give him a little shove out of bounds, but made the good decision. Also, Vince White was also there. Vince White, 11 tackles as a uh, junior, defensive end. Still able to get three on the play, second down and seven. Setting up a screen to Garcia. Gets the block he needs, David on a cutback. And David down to the 10, flag down on the play. Actually two flags, and it looked like they came in after the player was down on the field. After the play was over. Penalty for the run. Since the line did. Apologize for the White Hats referee, Mike. Well, it looks but like the penalty gonna... was on Miege for a personal foul after the play. Yes, so they're going to give him the first down and then walk back to 15 yards. Late hit by the 
offensive lineman, Pablo Montoya. But it is a new set of downs. Back to the 25, first and 10. And you like to see the aggressiveness. You just got to make sure you're playing in between the whistles there. Quick pass to the outside. Tommy Wright with his first catch of the night. Cuts it up inside the 20. And he'll be down to the 17, a gain of 8. Tommy Wright, 12th catch of the year. This guy's a senior, veteran wide receiver, sure-handed guy. Had two TDs in their win against Blue Valley Southwest. You see Armstrong there just finding the soft coverage, just getting the ball out to right, able to pick up good yardage on first down. Second down and short, Garcia. Oldham with the tackle, scraping down the outside linebacker. He's been playing very well tonight. Actually lost yardage, so it'll be third down and a long two. That long two may be three, but... Yep, scoreboard didn't change it. It looked like he lost a, a half yard to a yard on that last run. So more yardage to go as this pass is low and incomplete. Like Coppage and the quarterback weren't on the same page that time. Yeah, Coppage went in and Armstrong threw it on the outside. Fortunate that ball was not picked off. And looks like they're going to send the field goal unit out here for a 35-yard field goal attempt. Kev, you talked about it. he has got the leg to make these and... Well, if you've got a kicker that can go out there and finish off these drives, you'll take the three points, especially in this type of game. 35-yard attempt by Neenan, who has a strong leg. And it's up and good. Flag is down. bringing the offense back out. Did they get a guy maybe jump over the line of scrimmage there? Could be. Personal foul, hurdling, number 54 on Rockhurst. Bishop Asians set the penalty, first down. And he can't do that. I watched it all week. So the penalty was on, uh, I'm saying, 54 Sprague at 6'8", 265. Hey, let's go through it here. Through it, through it, through it. Looks like that's 16. Yeah, looks like 16 is the uh, player that they're calling this on. That would be uh, Charlie Luce, we believe. Oh, well, now you know why Grunny was so upset. He obviously saw it live and... Yeah, Tim Grunhard, one of the offensive coordinators, along with uh, Travis Grossadier. So Rockers shoots themselves in the foot. This is a huge penalty. So wave off the 35-yard field goal, and first and goal now for the Stags as they scrimmage at the 8-yard line. And now Kelly Dono is asking for a timeout. So Rockers burns their first timeout. Timeout, Rockers. Well, we've seen uh, a lot of penalties thus far in this game, and some of them been uh, detrimental. And that one could prove to be a very tough penalty, especially if Mies is able to punch it in for a touchdown. Let's check in with Leon. Yeah, you're talking about Tim Grunhardt, the offensive line coach for Bishop Yates, Chiefs Hall of Famer, of course, former head coach of Bishop Yates. On the other sideline for Rockers, they got Mike Garrett, the 1965 Heisman Trophy winner for USC, of course, went on to play for the Chiefs and scored a touchdown on perhaps the most famous play in Chiefs history, the 65 toss power trap in Super Bowl IV. I asked him if they got that in the playbook for Rockers. He says that, that play's retired a long time ago. Thanks, Leon. Yeah, Coach Garrett on the staff there in the white jacket. There he is. First and goal, quick toss, cut back, and the Stags running it with DeAndre Beasley, the transfer from Lee Summit North, headed to Northern Iowa to play college football, and he comes in and 
certain goal line uh, situations. And he's a 175-pound senior and gets a nice gain. Six yards down to the two, second down and goal for the Stags. And again, DeAndre punctures the left side. Touchdown, Bishop Miege. DeAndre Beasley. Yeah, Beasley just following in the big guys on the left side, Slyker and Wilson. And like the same play call two times in a row, but they liked it so much. Keep the ball in his hands. And again, you see the emotion on this Bishop Mie sideline. Got to expect this Rockhurst offense to try and sustain a drive and keep their defense off the field. Try and get back into this football game. Neenan two for two on PATs, 14 and nothing. Bishop Miege over Rockhurst. Late first quarter. As the fans in red celebrating a second touchdown for the Stags. Rockhurst with that huge penalty. Hurdling as this was set up by the fumble recovery. Nice catch by Coppage. They weren't able to get the first down. Tried a field goal that was good, but the penalty on Rockers set him up first and goal. And two plays later, they're into the end zone with the Beasley touchdown run. Yeah, give a lot of credit right now to that Bishop Mies offensive line. They've done a really good job in the passing game, giving Armstrong a lot of time. And right there, you see him in the running game. Able to finish off that drive with the touchdown run by Beasley. Coach Holmes wanted a fast start by his team. Wanted a first score on their first drive of the game. Did not get that, but he does have a two-touchdown lead here early as here's Barry on the return. Pete on a cutback, lowers his head and shoulders across the 25-yard line. And now Rockers needs to get going. They've had some penalties. They've had the turnover. This team last week Lost to Bentonville, Arkansas. And game was tied 7-7 at halftime. Second half, a couple of turnovers, a couple of big plays, and the team from Arkansas got away from Rockers. And you see this schedule as Missouri, uh, I don't know, Missouri has a tougher schedule than that. Rockers' strength of schedule has got to be in the top three at least as Aiden Ryan, tackled by Big Lonnie, as they call him. Lonnie Reed, 6'3", 394. There's Big Lonnie. It's hard to miss him. Guy that tore his ACL last year, had to come back from that. Nice run on first down as we're under a minute to go in your first quarter. Ryan trying to step to the outside and... Stag's defense says, no, sir. This is a quick Bishop Miege defense, and you see him just kind of shoot the gaps there. As Jack Baird able to make the tackle. We've seen him in the backfield a couple times. Yeah, he sealed the edge there nicely. And also involved in the stop was uh, P.J. McCallop. P.J., another guy coming off a torn yep. ACL. He tore his ACL in week one last year. So they're doing a good job of... Letting these running backs get to the outside. Third down and six. Rockers. Quick pass. And it's complete. Tight end with the catch for a first down. That is Spockman. Hayden Spockman, the junior, tight end. And Rockers able to move the chains as they'll spot the football at the 46 yard line. So a big third down conversion for the Hawklets. Yeah, and you saw Spockman just working across the field, and Hanson allows him to get across there and throws a strike, able to pick up that first down, and this is what this Rockhurst offense needed. Got uh, Spockman and Scanlon as their big tight ends. First down run by Ryan, and he gets it right up to midfield. That'll be the final play of the first quarter, and Miege 
dominating early. Two touchdowns. One via the pass. This one to Isaiah Coppage. And one via the run by Beasley. 14-0. Stags over the Hawklets on the High V High School Game of the Week. Well, every year for this game, you see the back deck of Amanda and Jeff Lowry. They put that up for bidding. And all the money goes to the Bishop Miege High School Fund. So there, if you want to watch the game from the Lowry's back deck, you get an auction, you bid, and there they are watching the game there on the Lowry's back deck. It's a great view. Yeah. Of course, they had the big St. Agnes tailgate pregame and thousands over there enjoying the food and drink as we start play in the uh, second quarter. Rockers on the move from near midfield. Second down and five. It's running play. And this will be Wemhoff. Wemhoff once again fighting a uh, bad ankle. And they said he would be on a snap count tonight. Coach Dono said we'll uh, use him uh, sparingly, but he's one of our better players, both as a linebacker and as a running back. So he got a yard on the play. It'll be third down and four now for the Hawklets. One turnover in the game. That proved costly as Miege. Able to take advantage. High formation, toss sweep, cut back by Ryan. And he has enough for the first down. Good blocking again off that left side, Johnny. Yeah, it just took the words right out of my mouth. I saw him go heavy set there and follow, follow number 54 to the first down as he just clears his man out of the way. Again, this Rockhurst offense starting to pick up a little bit of rhythm here as they're in uh, Miege's territory now. From the 43, motion by Ryan. Hanson rolling, throwing to Ryan near the sideline, cutting it back inside the 40, down near the 38-yard line, a pickup of five. Ryan just went in motion out there and just kind of stopped. Hanson able to find him. Yeah, they kind of ran a flood route to that side and just kind of leveled off. And Hanson does a good job of dumping it off to Ryan. Picks up a good good pickup there on first down. And that's something that Ryan can do out of the backfield. He's got 33 rushes on the year, but he's also got seven receptions. So he's a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield when needed. Yeah, that was his eighth catch of the year. Yes. This will be Ryan running the football. And Ryan averaging... 4.8 yards per carry and looks to have another rushing first down. Aiden Ryan Jr. Which is say he's a strong tough runner. Yeah, he looks like a guy who you know, coaches say hey this is where we need you this week and he can go fill that void. A pretty athletic kid in the backfield there for Rockers as he picks up another first down. From the 32, Ryan again has a crease. Ryan should have enough for another first down. And you mentioned it, Johnny. This Rockers offense starting to kick into gear. Guys up front, Sprague, Sexton, Brewer, Lewis, Gano doing a good job. And Sprague there with that crushing block. Yeah, you saw Gano come first on the pull, and then Sprague cleans up the linebacker, able to spring Ryan. Yeah, now they're starting to pick up yards and chunks. And just running the ball in between the tackles. Is this Rockhurst offensive line is their strength. They average 215 yards per game, 22 points scored per game. Quarterback draw, and it opens up. And Hanson with running room. Hanson to the edge. Touchdown, Rockhurst. Ethan Hanson. The quarterback draw, burning the Stags. 14-6. Miege. We talked about it in the pregame that Hanson was a guy that could do it with his feet. Design quarterback run there. Good blocking on the left side again to seal. And you see the speed by Hanson. Just kind of run away, runs away from the defenders. Able to find that front pylon and Ockers right back into this game. That's his third rushing touchdown of the year. Nick 
Kosha, the senior. Nine PATs made. And this one up and good. Rockers gets their running game going. Hit by the rushing touchdown by Ethan Hansen, the Rockers quarterback. There's the completion on third down to the tight end, Spockman. And then they get Ryan going on the ground, Johnny. And then the quarterback draw, they say, is the most uh, effective run. A quarterback scrambling run is the most effective running play in high school, college, or pro football. And Hanson with a 23-yard touchdown run. And Rockers right back in it. Yeah, you see there, 10 plays, 63 yards. This thing, there's 4.30 off the clock. Able to give that Rockers defense a little bit of a breather. Is That Rockers defense was on the field a lot of that first quarter, but we knew Rockers would answer the bell and able to come out and drive down the field. Kind of take the momentum a little bit out of the sails of this BA sideline for the time being. Ketchler to kick off. Beasley the deep man. Beasley has a guy step in front of him. It'll be a touchback as that was McCallop. All for not. First and ten from the 20 for Miege. He really wanted to return that one, but we know if that ball crosses the goal line, whether you catch it in play or not, it's a touchback. But See this Miege offense. If they've pretty much done what they've wanted to do, on that side of the that side of the ball tonight, but I think this might be their worst starting field position of the night, starting at their own 20 yard line. Armstrong quick throwing to the outside. And this is the speedster, Taryn Jackson, for a quick five yards on the play. Terran, 4-5 in the 40. A very explosive player, averaging 19 yards per catch. He saw Ketting go to try and make that tackle. He's got to break down and get that receiver to the ground, but Jackson able to pick up a few yards there after catch. Second down and five. Mack, and a tuck and run. Nice moves in the open field and Armstrong able to get the first down as he runs for 10 yards a nifty uh, move there to kind of shuck the defender you see Simon Connor kind of break loose up the middle there forces Armstrong up in the pocket Armstrong does the right thing just tuck it pick up good yardage there enough for a first down for Miege Coach Holmes says Mack is their most improved player Made himself into a college prospect. It's Garcia with running room. Garcia spinning. Garcia needs to put two hands on the ball as Rocker started to rip at it as he crossed the 45. But Yeage will keep it and move the chains. First down run. David Garcia, the junior tailback for the Stags. Garcia's low profile, able to kind of hide behind that. Big guys up front. You said you got to get both hands on the ball as you saw Rockers really trying to punch that ball out. Garcia able to hold on. Averaging 5.3 yards per carry is Garcia. Quick pass to the outside. Tommy Wright tripped up nicely on the play. Stringer goes low and makes the tackle for Rockers. Short gain, two yards on the play. Tackle on the play by number 23, Ben Stringer. Ben, a junior defensive back. Undersized kid. Tough as nails, though. That's kind of the mentality for both sides. It's just a bunch of guys that love to play football and physical guys. Garcia fighting for what he can. Vince White involved in the stop after a two-yard gain. Just 
team giving up 22 points per game defensively. Greg Oder, defensive coordinator, thought we might see his son Micah, the junior, but he is out with a pec injury. We wish him all the best in a speedy recovery. Micah Oder. Now Armstrong dancing around, buying time, and will dance to his sideline. Very little gain, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Good effort there by the DN, Connor Sexton. He was chasing Armstrong all around the pocket. Does a good job of forcing him to a short gain. And it's like we're going to have a fourth down here, and Miege is staying on the field. Yeah. Armstrong can punt it. They decide to. Fourth down and six. Maybe they'll try to draw them offside and then burn the uh, penalty. You see uh, John Holmes at the bottom of your screen. They're moving closer to the official, and now we'll take the timeout. So play clock winding down. Can't get the encroachment penalty, so it's like they will punt away on a fourth down and six near the midfield stripe. We'll see what Coach Holmes elects to do here. His offense has done pretty much what they've needed to do all night, but definitely don't want to shift the momentum into Rockers' favor here. Give him good field position on the stop. Let's check in with Leon down on the field. Well, Kevin, obviously a big night here at Bishop Gage because they're playing their big rival Rockers, but they're also honoring the 1972 Class 4A state championship team, the 50th anniversary of that championship team, coached by Lynn Molman. And Coach Holmes, the current coach, had Coach Molman's players speak to the current Bishop Yates team this afternoon. They got to get them fired up. Coach Molman went on to win state championships in 1975 and 1977. Before he came to Bishop Yates, he was the head coach at Centralia High School, where he had a running back by the name of John Riggins. Former Jayhawk, and the pass on the sideline. And no good. Out of bounds by Jensen. So they go for it on fourth down. Yeah, good report there, uh, Leon, as they uh, go for it on fourth down and six. Jensen near the sidelines. And nope. He swiped at the ground with his toe and missed it, it looked like. Yeah, I didn't see any of the black rubber coming up, but great effort there by Jensen trying to get that toe down. Yeah. Coach Holmes, good confidence in his offense going forward on fourth down. Coach Molman uh, that uh, Leon mentioned spoke to the Stags after a mass this afternoon. By the way, 1972, Miege beat Rockers 16-14. to So they got the state championship and the win over their rivals. As this running play, here's Ryan breaking free. Ryan across the 40 and... Rockers getting the ground game working. And it's another first down run by Aiden Ryan, the junior for Rockers. Yeah, and Ryan does a good job of staying patient, staying behind his blockers. He kind of sees that edge open up. You can see that speed in the open field, able to pick up good yards there on first down. And again, just sticking with what they're good at, running the football and stay behind those big guys up front. Keep the chains moving. Well, that was a uh, nice 16-yard run as Hanson rolling, has space, throwing on the run, and the pass is dropped incomplete. As uh, crossing route there by uh, Loose. As you take a look at the uh, tailgating, then they're watching the game on the big screen out there. We want to say thank you to Mark Kellerman for feeding our crew. Uh, they were uh, dining before the game. Me, I was walking all the way over here, and uh, my eyes were bigger than my uh, stomach, as the saying goes, because halfway here, I was thinking, man, Kevin, you are too old to be walking here. But I live in Roland Park, so I thought the parking would be a nightmare. It is. And <laughs> I decided to walk. As here's the uh, running play by the quarterback, Hanson. But, uh-oh, Hanson ends up on... Uh, Lane number one of the track. And uh, no flags, it looks like. Well, when you're going into the opposing sideline, there's not a guy 
lot of guys going to try and hold you up. Looks like you just kind of got tripped up there with somebody. Let's see here. He, the camera man. Yeah, maybe the camera guy. Uh, Dave Pond there, our camera guy on the sidelines, maybe uh, sent the Rockers quarterback stumbling uh, to the uh, track. But he gets five yards on the play. It'll be third down and five. Hawklets have been running on this down and distance. Third down and five. Quick pitch it out. Ryan. Cut back run to the edge. In space. Ryan. Ten. Five. Powered his way into the end zone. Touchdown. Rockhurst. Aiden Ryan says you will not stop me near the goal line as he gets six for the Hawklets as their fans go crazy here at Dahl Stadium. New ball game in Roland Park. PAT away from tying it are the Hawklets. Kosha, spelled C O C A, pronounced Kosha. Extra point ties the ball game at 14. Didn't you see Ryan on this drive really starting to pick up a full head of steam? They like that left side of the line. And then see here Hanson with the run out of bounds. And then the touchdown run, they decide to go with the quick option. And Hanson does a good job of getting it into Ryan's hands. And you see Ryan do the rest. He finishes plowing through a couple red jerseys. And looks like Beasley was there to keep him out of the end zone. But... This Rockhurst offense, as we talked about, answered the bell. 14 unanswered. Tie this ball game up. The ground game is clicking for the Hawklets. You take a look at legendary and longtime coach and Rockhurst Hall of Famer, Coach John Morris there, the offensive line coach. They are doing a job right now on the Miege defense. And Ryan and Hanson getting big chunks for Coach Donahoe. And they are back in the game. They were down 14 to nothing, 14 unanswered, as Johnny said. Hanson and Ryan touchdown runs, and we got a new ball game here at Dahl Stadium. This kick will sail into the end zone for a touchback. Well, now they say Beasley can return it. He clearly fielded it inside the end zone, and that should be a touchback. There's a flag down on the play. Andre Beasley got near the 20 before he was hauled back. Well, maybe the ball didn't cross the goal line. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's yeah, it looked like his body. Yeah, you're right, Johnny. Good point there. Maybe the ball never got into the end zone. His legs were in the end zone, but he fielded it outside and took it out. Let's see what the penalty is all about. There is no foul on the play for an illegal block in the back. First down, Miege. So the penalty flag will be picked up. And Miege will get it. Let's see. His legs are, yeah, his legs are in the end zone, but the ball is not, I guess, what you're saying, Johnny. So that's what the, the official saw, and he's right there. Yeah, got, he has the best view of it. Yeah, I didn't, and I thought you know, he was going to stop it. But. Well, apparently the ball stayed in the field of play, and DeAndre got a return out near the 20 yard line. First and 10 now for the Stags. Now trying to find some offense. Armstrong. First down pass, finds his man, that is Jensen, the big tight end, and he's across the 35 for a first down as he is tackled on the play by Yarborough, the strong safety. Yeah, good first down play call here by Coach Holmes. He's finding the hot hand in Jensen right now, and again, Jensen's not shying away from any contact as he's lowering his shoulder trying to pick up those extra yards. 16 yards on the first down pass. Garcia up the middle. 
And will not get to the 40. Just across the 30 and 9 yard line for a couple. Rockhurst defensive line doing a good job. Jack Manning, one of the sophomores. And also involved was Big Andrew. Andrew, 6'8", 265, the junior. Also plays basketball. But is a Division I prospect as an offensive lineman. Second down and seven. Armstrong taking off. Armstrong will get to the sideline. He'll go out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Get about four on the play for Mack. Well, and you go back to Sprague a couple years ago. He wanted to wanted to play basketball in college, but I think uh, he got some good advice from some people that said that you know, your ticket one day may be a uh, offensive lineman in the NFL, and definitely is a kid who takes care of his body and is an athletic kid for his size. See him playing both sides of the ball tonight. From the 45, third down and short. Quick slant is caught. Coppage, first down. And you see Coppage use his body there, kind of blocking out the defender. He knows where he needs to get to. And it's a good job of securing that catch, picking up the first down. Keep this drive alive for Miege as the clock starts ticking under 3.30 in the half. Coming up, Hy-Vee at the half. Numbers and highlights brought to you by your employee-owned Hy-Vee stores. Armstrong, downfield, Tommy Wright, the catch! Tommy Wright inside the 10-yard line is whipped to the ground. Stringer the touchdown saving tackle, but it'll be first and goal for Miege. See if there was a double move there. Looked like Tommy Wright kind of had a couple steps. You see the pump there by Armstrong. He had great... Great throw over the top, right on the right on the money, allowing Tommy Wright to catch that in full stride. 45 yards, Garcia, oh man, did he get knocked in the next week by Connor Sexton, the defensive end for Rockers, number 58. I've seen Sexton active all night on that defensive line right there. Looks like he was unblocked or just beat his man and able to make the big hit in the backfield. It'll be a tackle for a loss. He leads the team in that category. He also leads the team in sacks. The senior defensive end, Connor Sexton, back to the seven-yard line. Second down and gold as we approach halftime. Tie ball game. Miege trying to get a touchdown on a running play. Garcia not going to get there. Rocker too strong. Vince White to finish. Also involved in the stop. Jeb Ketting, one of their good linebackers, a sophomore. Coppinger and Ketting, their two leading tacklers on the team. And now we'll get a uh, timeout taken by Rockhurst. Yeah, trying to just keep that game clock with some time on it. If, see if they can't get a drive. It's, it's going to be third and goal for Miege. Obviously, if you're Rockhurst, you know, you're keying in on Jensen. He's a big guy. and go get the ball over the top. We've seen what Coppage can do in short yardage. But this Miege offense, it's really hard to key in just on those two guys. Tommy Wright having a big catch there. We know what the running backs can do. Seen him. Next week, a big-time Missouri matchup. Lee Summit North at Ray Peck. And these teams in our Super 25, number three for North, number eight for Ray Peck. Summit North swept the series last year. That should be an excellent game there at Ray Peck High School. Third down and goal from the five-yard line after the Rockers' timeout. Armstrong throwing pass is caught in traffic, squeezing it in to Taryn Jackson for a five-yard touchdown reception. Wow, the window was small, but the stag strike for six. And again, you see the guys up front allowing Armstrong to keep his eyes downfield, staying patient. Jackson just finds a little bit of space. 
Armstrong threads the needle there for a big touchdown on third goal. Extra point by Neenan. Right down the middle, right toward the old tailgate there at St. Agnes. And what a big drive. 80-yard drive by the Stags. Yeah, big first down play there to set that drive up. And we see the pass here down the field. Armstrong to right. Let's set up that touchdown. Great concentration there by Jackson. As he knew he was going to get a little bit of contact there, but able to haul that touchdown reception in. And the A's back on top. Just a little under two minutes to go in the half. Let's see what Rockhurst and their offense decide to do. Mac the knife with the 11 touchdown passes on the year. Two in this game. Now Jackson has his third receiving touchdown. That five-yard TD catch. And the Stag fans were, I would say they were worried a few minutes ago as Rockers seem to have the momentum on their side and moving the ball, have to feel better after that 80-yard drive. And now we've got under two minutes to go before Hyvie at the half. And Rockers will have one timeout. Get the ensuing kickoff. And we wouldn't expect anything different in this game. Back and forth battle. New Rockers was going to get back into it, but credit Miege for coming back and getting that touchdown. Pete Berry on the return from the 13, and Berry. Not much running room. Good special teams work. As coming down on special teams was Betts, their leading tackler as a linebacker and works the special teams. And yeah, you like to see that. Guys that are willing to go out there and help their team, whatever situations. And we know a lot of these winning programs have starters on both sides of the ball playing on special teams as well. Coach Donahoe. It's the two-minute offense ready to go. As he is looking for the tying touchdown before the halftime break. Plenty of time on, on the clock. Two timeouts. Hanson rolling, throwing, completing, and has his tight end, Spockman. Nice gain across the 40-yard line. Be a first down catch, second catch of the night for Hayden Spockman, the junior tight end for Rockers. Ryan, cutback run, tackled by Betts on the play. As he gets a couple on the play, is everybody looking at the wristband for Rockers as they get the play signaled in from the sideline? And the quarterback hit, ball loose. It hit off a Stags player, but Rockers able to cover it up inside the 30-yard line. The Stags player did not see it. And Gano covers it up as Sadehi had the ball kind of glance off, I think, his uh, shoulder. Yeah, his right shoulder, or, or his hand. And then uh, Gano, the right, right tackle, covered it up. But it's a big-time loss. And now Rockers might just take a knee as it's third down and 22 as we get a penalty flag. And it's going to be on Rockers. Full start, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. And I think Coach Holmes is letting the referee know if they run this football and don't pick it up, he wants a quick timeout. Try and steal a possession here before the half. Yeah. Yeah. The wide receiver there. They uh, well, they got Jack Bickelmeyer with two different numbers. The roster I have has him with the number five, but I've seen pictures of Jack in the number sixteen jersey. So penalty on a Rockers wide receiver as now pass to the sideline is incomplete. As they were targeting Tommy Sisper. And fourth down, Rocker's going to punt it away. So the sack on the quarterback 
a drive killer and a half, along with penalties. They had both of those. Penalty and a uh, sack of the quarterback. Big loss, so that stymies their drive, and they'll punt it away with Spockman. And this is a short punt that's going to get the field turf roll inside the 30-yard line. It'll go 51 yards and no return. So Miege not fielding that. Cost him quite a bit of real estate, but really not that much time on the clock. Miege has two timeouts left. And you go back to that defensive possession by Miege doing a good job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Like Kevin said, force the sack and then force the quick throw there by Hanson, but Good punt there. Able to flip the field. The age has two timeouts left. I see a bunch set to the left of Mac Armstrong. Now the receivers break apart. And Armstrong going to throw it. Now he'll take off and run. Running room for Mac, And Mac will get it across the 40-yard line. And we'll see a timeout by Miege. So he gets 15 yards on the run, and Coach taking his second timeout, Coach Holmes and the Stag. Well, if you're thinking field goal, you're thinking 25-yard line you need to get to. Got about 35 yards here. Still have a timeout left. You'd like to see if you do get a pass completed, somebody be able to get out of bounds and save that timeout. There's plenty of time. You're just running the risk of a play over the middle not able to get down the field and get set up there is the St. Agnes tailgate watching the broadcast there and still tailgating tailgated through the rain this morning and the sun coming out fans waving there I think everybody's going to go back to tailgating at halftime yes First and ten after the Miege timeout. Pass down the field and going to be nearly intercepted as the safety was coming over there. Dom Yarber on nearly got the pick as they were targeting Coppage down the field. But look at Dom making up ground here and got his hands on it but couldn't hang on. Yeah, you see Dom doing a good job of covering that side of the field. Armstrong, he didn't float that. I mean, he put some put some heat behind that, but... Yarbrough able to use his speed and break that pass up. Very athletic kid with a lot of upside making his first start tonight. Second down and ten, Staggs. Armstrong. Buying time, throwing to the sidelines, and the pass is caught by Jensen. And he's got enough for a first down, 13 yards on the catch. Dagan Jensen. Player is down for Rockhurst near the 40-yard line behind the play. We have an injury timeout for a Rockhurst player. And the player is Ketting, the linebacker, the sophomore, one of their leading tacklers. Yeah, there was a lot going on right before this throw. As you see Armstrong kind of scrambling around and those linemen just kind of just two guys almost ran into each other. It looked like friendly fire there, but good throw there by Armstrong in traffic. Able to find this big guy, Jensen, on the sideline. Injured player, Jeb Ketting, sophomore linebacker, one of the leading tacklers on the team. Rockers has several players down with injury tonight. Let's take another look at this play. Yeah, I think his teammate got him, yep. Just kind of landed awkwardly. Yeah, Rockers playing without Connor Clifton, one of their defensive linemen. Micah Oder, one of their secondary players. Colton Wemhoff is on a limited snap count tonight, so several players down with injury. First and 10 from the 46 after the Jensen catch. Need about 20, 21 yards here to get to that 25-yard line. Make it around a 42-yard field goal. Oh, 
Armstrong asking his receivers to come back. Jensen does. The tight end with the catch. Jensen cutting it up the field inside the 20 down near the 15. And they'll spot him officially at the 13, but the clock has run out. So Jensen went for all the marbles as he saw the clock winding down with the scoreboard in the end zone that was in front of him. So he tried to make it, but came up short down to the 13. It's a nice catch and run for 33. But... The Stags don't get anything out of it, but they still lead at halftime at the break. 21 to 14 is Mac Armstrong. Two touchdown passes. Beasley a rushing touchdown. Let's check in with Leon with Coach Holmes. Yeah, with uh, John Holmes, head coach of Bishop Yates, of a huge dose of intensity. You guys got off to a great start. How did you think your offense performed? Yeah, I mean, we got to make some throws, and I think we took their shot there, and that score to go up 21 14 was huge. Um, they had the momentum, and our guys answered. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. How encouraged? I mean, they come back, and they got a little momentum, and you, you shot them down. Yeah, you know, I mean, Mac Armstrong throws a great ball um, to our wide receiver there, Taryn Jackson, on that third down. Um, which was a huge play, and then defense gave us the ball. I wish Dagan would have went down there so we could have maybe kicked a field goal there, but that's a heck of an effort by our guys, but we know we got to do it 24 more minutes. Yeah, second half, what do you want to see out of your team? Oh, the same intensity. It's Rockers, man. Rockers from the age. It's going to be a great second half. Um, we got to come out with that same intensity. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Coach John Holmes, Kevin, back to you. That man's heart is beating fast. He is loving life. John Holmes by a touchdown. As it's 21-14 at the break in the Catholic Clash 2022. Ivy at the half coming up next. Halftime score, Miege by a touchdown over Rockhurst in the Catholic Clash 2022. And time now to check the Hy-Vee first half numbers. Let's see what stands out. Wow, Miege uh, really throwing the ball around the yard. Uh, Rockhurst got the ground game going, though, especially in the second quarter. Yeah, and they were able to control that clock in the second quarter as we've seen this Miege offense picking up big chunk. Big chunks of yardage in the passing game. Uh, picking up 14 first downs on the way. you got to imagine they're going to continue to stay with that. And then, you know, for Rockers, you just touched on it. Keep the rushing game going. Keep that clock running. Keep that Bishop Miege offense off the field. Rockers will have the football to start the third quarter. They won the opening coin toss, deferred their option to the second half. So the Hawklets will be getting the first touches of the third quarter, but a big first half by the tight end for Bishop Miege, Dagan Jensen. And we saw him have a couple big catches in that first quarter. As you see down here, high point in that football, able to bring it down for a big gain. And when he's not throwing the ball to Coppage, we've got Jensen, the big tight end, able to kind of roam free in the middle of the field. Can you see the strong throws by Armstrong? Getting that ball out to his playmakers, and Jensen almost had a heck of a catch on the sideline. Let's check in with Leon down on the field. Yeah, we got head coach Kelly Donahue, the head coach of Rockers. Coach, your team got off to a slow start, down 14 to nothing. How encouraged though you came back? Yeah, very encouraged that we had some resilience there, fought back, just can't turn it over. We said that, we just can't turn it over, and we got to take the ball away. We haven't been able to do that. Um, we just got to do a little better job. You know, then we, we got beat on a deep route that we should have been a deep. There are little things like that that we can't make mistakes on, but we're going to be fine. We get the ball back. It's going to be real important. We go do something with it. Um, it's a tough offense. You know, they're pretty prolific, but um, we've, we've just got to slow it down. But we got to do a good job helping our defense by controlling that football offensively. And we're running it pretty well. We got to keep running it well, and we got to hit some timely passes this half. We just got to keep it close. Just keep it close all the way through and make a play at the end. All right, Coach, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, guys. Kevin, back to you. The stern-looking Kelly Donahoe, a guy that battled cancer. and uh, he, he was like that. Uh, he had his game face on when I showed up at 530 to talk to him, uh, just kind of check the lineups. And uh, he's had that stern, very serious uh, head coach look on his face. A big game for Aiden Ryan. He got the ground game going for Rockers in the second quarter. Yeah, and they didn't start well on offense in that first quarter, but we 
We knew this offensive line for Rockers was taking a lot of pride in this game, and Aiden Ryan starts picking up Some momentum here in the running game. Is you see, he's a tough guy to bring down. This guy's definitely taken on a couple defenders, and he had the big run for the touchdown to tie the game up. And and he's going to be a big part of this Rockhurst offense in the second half. Well, he had that long uh, touchdown run of 36 yards. And the defender was waiting for him at the goal line. And he powered through the stag player and got in. And his team, uh, one turnover, that hurt them. Seen a few penalty flags hurt the Hawklets. I think that's what this second half is going to come down to. You know, which team commits the least amount of penalties and obviously takes care of the football. We've heard both coaches speak and talk about that this game's going to come down to the fourth quarter. It's going to come down to a possession. Hi, V, a proud sponsor. And they are proud to support our Kansas City High School Athletics. My High V's right on Martway. In the mission area, that's where I do all my uh, grocery shopping. The Kevin White uh, Junk Food Patrol, that's what I call it. <laughs> Got my uh, food ready for that Kansas-Duke football game tomorrow. Of course, Missouri-Auburn and uh, K-State, Oklahoma. Man, there's some good games tomorrow on the college ranks. I got my junk food from hy V. am ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely excited for that KU-Duke game. Sellout crowd. It's going to be a good environment. 11 a.m. kickoff. So hopefully the uh, Jayhawks can keep it rolling and get to 4 0. Well, we're about ready to get the third quarter underway. Rockers once again won the coin toss, deferred their option to the second half, and they come in at 1 and 3. They've got Aquinas next week. So they continue the Catholic clashes. But uh, you saw the look in the eye of Kelly Donahoe there. Is he's really all about this game? It was interesting talking to him and Coach Holmes this week. Both of them. And what's the mood? What's the what, what are they saying over there? What's how are they feeling about this game? I told both coaches they want to kick your butt. That's <laughs> pretty plain and simple. Well, you know, a lot of these youngsters around the field, you know, they they make a choice. You know, do you go the Rockers route or you go the Mies route? So. They definitely want to put on a good show for these kids and persuade them a little bit to go to their school. Former uh, Jayhawk uh, quarterback. I learned that he was actually born, though, in the state of Nebraska, and he's a closet Nebraska football fan. He's born in O'Neill, Nebraska. He's got a picture of Tom Osborne in his office. Got a nice picture of he and Tony Severino in his office. I'm not sure you have a choice growing up in Nebraska. Well, yeah, he was born there, but he was he grew up in in Harrisonville, played football for Harrisonville and then for the KU Jayhawks, but he has a soft spot in his heart for Nebraska Cornhusker football. And they're tough times right now. As we are ready for the third quarter kick. Stephen Neenan, Neenan will kick it off. The Asian red, Rockers in white. Who wins the Catholic Clash for 2022? And all rides on this second half as Neenan sends it down the field. It'll be Barry from the six-yard line on the return. Pete Barry has some blocking on the edge. Pete Barry with a nice return out near midfield as he is finally tackled on the play by Johnson, the backup Defensive back, Amarion Johnson got great blocking on the edge. And he'll get a 43-yard return, and that's the way Rockers wants to start it. The big return by Pete Berry, the senior, backup running back. Ethan Hansen, the quarterback. Aiden Ryan in the backfield. Takes the first handoff and powers up the middle. Ryan lost the football. Ball still loose, covered up by Bishop Miege. Coming up with a loose football. Number six, Jack Baird, the outside linebacker. So Ryan trying to get extra yards, had the ball rip loose, 
It looked like a lineman for Rockers would get on it, but instead it's Jungle Jack, Jack Baird. And you see Aiden Wing right there. Does a good job of holding him up and getting that strip. It looked like Aiden Ryan was... Aiden Wing was the guy that knocked it away from Aiden Ryan, number five here. A great job there by Aiden Wing, holding him up and strip that ball, but I think Aiden Ryan was trying to take that all the way to the end zone with another big run, but... Sprague had a chance to get on it. Instead, Baird does. Quick pass to the near side. Tommy Wright the catch. Tommy Wright hurtling the defender gets to the 50. And it'll be a gain of 11 and a first down. Hey, Baird, you're on TV. That's what's happening right now. Player down for Rockhurst. Number 43, and that's the second time we've seen Ketting on the field. This looks like the same problem, Johnny. That shoulder, yeah, he uh, got hit by his own teammate in the first half, and I don't think that injury's getting any better. Well, and sometimes you get those stingers and kind of lose a little bit of feeling down that side of your body. Obviously, you hope it's nothing serious, but anybody that's had a stinger before knows how debilitating it is. And Good to see him up on his feet. He kind of landed on top of right, and that's when uh, that shoulder started acting up again. We saw that injury in the first half. Well, we know they're already thin on that side of the football, so. So the penalty... uh, Apparently there was a penalty, so waves off the nice catch and run by Tommy Wright, the officials meeting. So officially, no first down. Back to first and 15 at the 34 after the Rockers fumble. So as an illegal man downfield was the penalty call. We were distracted with the uh, Ketting injury. So we've seen that penalty a couple of times tonight, so that Obviously is a point of emphasis with this crew. And now it'll be second down and 12. Stagg's going to try to take advantage of the Rockers fumble on their first drive of the third quarter. We're able to do that in the first half. Rockers now two turnovers. Yeage none. Garcia to the 40 and that's it. Two yards pushed back there by White. Number 22, David Garcia carries for the Stags. And now it's going to be a third down and uh, it's like third nine down. facing the Stags offense. Yeah, we've seen Garcia able to get through that first line and some big plays on the ground but big boys up front for Rockers closing up those running lanes stopping them at just a three yard gain here. Armstrong, screen pass to Garcia, has to make something work here, and he's not able to get the first down. Rockers did a good job at the open field stop. Vince White making the stop. Garcia made the first wave miss, Johnny, but the second wave got him. It'll be fourth down, and they're still going to need about two yards. Yeah, he's a tough guy to bring down in the open field. He's shifty, and see him there, almost able to pick up that first down, but See Rockers sprinting the return guy on there. They fake it, trying to throw a pass. Now they'll take off and run for the first down. It works. Aiden Wing, who got the strip, caught the long snap, tried to throw it. Little jump pass. Once he got his feet on the ground, he took off and ran and converted the fourth down play down to the 46-yard line. Yeah, just a snap to the up back, and Wing does a good job of not trying to force anything, realizes he's got a little bit of space to run, and able to pick up that first down. So you see the athleticism there of Aiden Wing as he 
Just gets enough for that first down. So the fourth down conversion. And at the 46-yard line, Armstrong going to work with a pass to the outside, making the catch Coppage. And the defender slipping down as Coppage works inside the 40-yard line. And Coppage a nice gain on first down as he's down inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Again, Armstrong trusting Coppage on the outside. Good job of securing that pass. Picking up a good solid eight yards on first down for Miege. Second down and two. Garcia gets a hole off the right side. He'll get the first down. Taken down there by Wemhoff, the linebacker. First down stays. And the Stags line up quickly. They want to go fast. Rockers trying to substitute. The stringer is run off. One of their defensive backs. And Armstrong wanting to throw. And the receiver, Coppage, falling down as he tried to pick on the guy that just came in the game, Michael Brooks, in the secondary for Rockers. And Coppage slipping. There was rain earlier in the day. Not a lot, but the field may be a little slippery now as yeah, early like a, evening hours. Looked like a back shoulder there. Coppage tried to get turned around, but Kev, you just said, field might be a little bit slick still and not able to get his footing as that pass falls incomplete. Maybe Dewey, the Dewey field turf field. Second down and 10. Armstrong. Pass caught. Coppage inside the 20. And brought down there by Brooks. So they brought a new cornerback in. And now they're working Coppage against him. And he makes the first down catch. As that'll go for 15 and a first down. As again, Miege wanting to go fast. Armstrong over the middle. And it's another first down. First and gold. As this... Pass is caught by number two, and that's the other tight end. That is Hollis Moeller. So they got two tight ends in Jensen and Moeller. And no, it's not a first down. I beg your pardon. He got nine. So not a first down yet. Jump the gun on that one. Second down and short for the Stags. Garcia goes in motion. They fake it to him, and the quarterback keeps it. And now I promise you, tailgate people there in uh, St. Agnes, that is a uh, first down for Mac Armstrong. Well, in that last pass play, you saw Armstrong go through all of his reads and saw Moeller across the middle of the field. So it'll be first and gold. The chain gang has not yet decided to move, though. It's first and goal from the eight. There we go. They have moved and... Here we go. I promise you. First and goal from the eight. Garcia, hard fought run and then ripped back. David Garcia, not much fancy, a lot, not a lot of burner speed by this guy, but he gets what's blocked most of the time and say he's a vocal kid and always seems to come up with a big run for the team. He got three in the last one, second down and five. Second down and goal from the five. Stags trying to go up by two touchdowns in the third quarter. Slant and off the hands of Jackson as the vision was blocked there by Bryce Middleton. The free safety kind of cut in front of Taron and kind of messed everything up. Watch this. He thinks he's got it. He thinks, and then here comes Middleton, the ball hawk. And, yep. Again, we saw Jackson with the big catch in the first half for a touchdown, and thought maybe he was going to be able to pull that one down, but <clears throat> give Bryce Middleton a lot of credit there for getting just enough in front of that football. Third down and goal. Armstrong, quick pass, and it's caught at the one-yard line. Coppage. Coppage down low, scoops it up off the turf. And it's second receiving touchdown of the night. Isaiah Coppage, Bishop Miege now up 27-14 in 6.09 third quarter. 
Coppage two on the night. Now five on the season. Neenan continuing perfect with the PATs. And now Rockhurst has turned it over twice. Miege has capitalized twice. And they lead 28-14 to in the third quarter. Yeah, just like the first quarter, Armstrong to Coppage. They continue here in the third quarter. And Coppage had a big drive here. As we see the strip here by... Aiden Wing gave Miege the football. And again, you see Coppage here in open space. It's really tough to bring down. And right there, Coppage just finding the goal line. Able to secure that ball for the touchdown, but good drive by that Bishop Miege offense after the turnover. As now they've scored 14 points off two Rockhurst turnovers. And they tell in the tailgate celebrating as uh, there you see the uh, 15 plays, 61 yards after the Rockers fumble, five and a half off the clock. Coppage with his second touchdown catch of the night. Three now for Mac Armstrong, 12 for the season for Mac. That's 12 touchdown passes, no INTs. Well, remember, Bishop Mies went for the fake punt on fourth down able Big to play. pick that up and keep that drive alive and that was Aiden Wing able to run for it on fourth down as they fake the punt this is a squib kick that'll get in the end zone Barry trying to run after it couldn't retrieve it and it'll be first and ten from the 20 and now Coach Donahoe and Coach Cruz brought the offense back in the first half, down two touchdowns. There is Isaiah on the bench. Play action out of the I formation. Ethan hit as he throws, throws it out of bounds. Betts was hitting the quarterback. Incomplete, they're saying. Also with the pressure there for the uh, Stags defensively. Number 54, Schleicher. And you see Hanson just run out of real estate here, trying to make a play, but see Betts there at the end, and like Hanson... Going to take a play off here as he uh, wasn't able to get back in the huddle. New quarterback in the ball game for now, Rockers. That will be Carter Graham as they keep it on the ground. And that's Aiden Ryan as we check in with Leon. Hey, Kevin, going back to that fake punt, that really took the wind out of the defense for Rockers. They were really discouraged after that. And I talked to Aiden Wing, the young man who pulled it off, and he, he, he indeed said it was a pass all the way, but nobody was open, so he elected to run. And as Johnny noted, great poise by that young man, and that is just a huge play here in the second half, obviously. Carter Graham, a senior quarterback, in for an injured... Uh... Ethan Hansen now, well, it looks like Hansen's back in the ball game. So just one play out, toss sweep, and it's Wemhoff across the 30, and he'll have a first down. So that's good to see uh, Ethan Hansen back in the game. Yes, well, he's moving his arm around. Yeah, I think he just kind of got rolled up on that left shoulder, but good job by that Rockhurst offense. Quarterback goes out after the first down play, but able to pick up a first down with two good run plays there. Hansen battling a, a groin issue throughout the year. This guy is a legit 4-4-9 guy. Ryan to the edge. Ryan with another big run. First down, Rockers. As he gets to the uh, spottiness at the 46-yard line. 13-yard run by the Ryan Express here. And again, good read, good decision there by Hansen. Getting rid of the ball. And you see what Aiden Ryan's been able to do in the open field. Takes a couple defenders with him. 
Ryan been a hard man to tackle tonight. He's been delivering some blows in the uh, secondary for Miege. And Ryan will get about, uh, about four yards on the play. As the young fans uh, enjoying the uh, big screen there. Having a fun night here in Roland Park. Bishop Miege High School, St. Agnes Tailgate. Weather beautiful. Fall football here in lovely Roland Park. Doesn't get much better than the Catholic Clash. Rockers and Bishop Miege. Here's Rockers. Again on the ground. And this is Wemhoff. I mentioned earlier he came in tonight uh, questionable with an ankle injury. And coaching staff saying he'd be on a limit snap account both offensively as a running back and one of their top linebackers. So that's why we've seen more of Ryan tonight. But Ryan's run the ball tough tonight. Yeah, I think, you know, with Weimhoff not able to get out there as much, I think Ryan's done a good job of shouldering the carries, but also will take that breather uh, every few plays. Third down, and oh, a nice play there by McCallop scraping down the defensive back. Came in unblocked, made the stop, and it's fourth down. And they're still going to need about three yards. P.J. McCallop, his sister, Imagine, plays on the girls' basketball team. Is a very good player. P.J. probably one of the fastest guys on the team. Yeah, but you've seen this Miege defense start to creep a little bit more closer to the line of scrimmage. Obviously anticipating that run. See if Rockers can't get a play-action pass over the top. Well, big play for Rockers. Need a conversion. Give it off to Ryan. Cut back. And he plows his way. It'll depend on the spot. Look Boy, like this is going to be close. But it doesn't look like he's going to get the nah, spot. I don't think he's going to get the spot. It's going to be about the uh, nose of a football short, it looks like. But Coach Donahoe exasperated on the sideline as I think the officials are going to... Bring in the chain gang for an official's timeout and a measurement, but it looks short from the side angle view as Coach Donahoe frustrated on the Rockers sideline. We have an official timeout. Yeah, it looks like measurement. the first down marker's just short of the 44 yard line. Can we see Aiden Ryan keeping those feet churning? And they are short. Miege gets the stop on fourth down. As that's Hayward, the strong safety of the stop as we check in with Leon. Hey, after that big uh, stop by the Stags on defense, it's going to be interesting to see what they do on offense because Tim Grunhard and head coach John Holmes were discussing that earlier when they were on defense that they got to run the ball more. They want to eat the clock a little bit and not give it over to Rockers so quickly. So we may see him run the ball perhaps a little more here. There's the Chiefs Hall of Famer in blue, but that's so his guys can see him better as he's signaling. He's the run game coordinator, and uh, Travis Grossadier is the pass game coordinator. Let's see if the Stags want to run it. No, they've been throwing it all season long. They're 3-0, and and Armstrong... Gets away from the first, the second wave, the third wave will get him for a sack. Was a nice play there by, uh, like the uh, linebacker, Tommy Coppinger will get credit for the Rockers' sack. Well, and again, it's Sexton in the backfield, creating enough havoc back there that Armstrong has to kind of run around and get flush from the pocket. It's taken down for a sack. of two on the sack and here's Beasley who got the touchdown back in the first half Ketting back in loosening that right shoulder he's obviously dinged it up but he got involved in the stop White assisting on the tackle as well but good to see him back but Paul McGannon their athletic trainer will be looking at him congratulations to Paul he was put in the Rockers Hall of Fame also, our old friend, former Jayhawk, Connor Tehan, former Rockers quarterback and basketball star at Rockers, going in the 
Rockers Hall of Fame this year. Congratulations to both of them. Yes, here's Armstrong. Jensen again. First down. Bishop Miege inside the 45. They'll spot him at the 42-yard line. Oh, there's Mr. McGannon right there. Longtime athletic trainer. And now Hall of Famer at Rockers. Well-deserved. And you saw Jensen there stay patient, good awareness, just stayed in the middle of the field. Armstrong able to find him in his progression. Armstrong going with a deep ball and nice coverage that time by Stringer as Tommy Wright tried to undercut it and go get it as he's a much taller wide receiver at 6'1", Stringer at 5'10", but Stringer really good coverage here. They say he's undersized, but able to make a play on the ball, nearly got the interception. You see the confidence that Armstrong has in his receivers to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Good play there by the defensive back. Ball on the field as the mesh point wasn't there, but Armstrong able to get on it, cover it up. Once again, no turnovers tonight for Coach Holmes' team. Oops. Now plus eight is Miege in turnover ratio. Plus two tonight. Plus six coming into the game. So now third down and 11. They, they're going to have to run a play as the play clock is down under 10 seconds as we wind out the third quarter clock. Quick pass. Oh, nearly intercepted there by the uh, linebacker. Pass. It looked like Coppinger tipped it. Ketting uh, maybe got the near pick. Let's take another look here. Well, it looked like it was no. Dom Yarbrough. Yeah, it was Ketting uh, with that sore shoulder. Nearly uh, got up and got the interception here as his teammate Yarborough nearly got the rebound. That would have been the first interception thrown by Armstrong. Fourth down and 11. They'll go for it on a, uh, well, Nope, they'll just pooch it down the field. And the coverage will not avoid the touchback. So, Mac putts, punts very, uh, well, he might be a good putter as well. But his punt this time uh, is a little pooch punt. Uh, and now Coach Donahoe will have it at the 20-yard line. His team down by two. Ball game not over. Two scores. Had the, the two fumbles and a stop on fourth down. Quick pass outside. Receiver will run out of bounds. And that was Mitch Forbes. Forbes able to stop the clock and get a nice gain on first down. Forbes coming right into the tailgate, folks. Nice running play by Ryan as he's tripped up. Betts cut his legs out from under him, and that is the final play of the third quarter. And this is the Catholic clash. The fourth quarter will decide it. Miege, though, up by two touchdowns. As Coppage, the wide receiver for the Stags, having a big night. 28-14 after three on the High V High School Game of the Week. High V scoring by quarters. Well, Miege got to the fast start. Second quarter, Rockhurst got back in it, but Miege took a seven point lead at halftime. And now a two touchdown lead after a Rockhurst fumble, but here it is the final 12 minutes. Rockhurst scrimmaging at the 26, needed to convert third down and four. Ryan got tackled from behind and kind of pushed from behind. And I think the tackle helped him, uh, gave him a little more momentum, and he was able to get the first down. Yeah, and again, he's a guy who's not going to go down on first contact. You see him 
Keep those shoulders lean forward. Keep those feet moving. Able to pick up that tough first down there. And huge first down for Rockers as they're looking to get some points on the board this drive. From the 31, play action, quick pass, and Ryan is lit up on the play. As a hard hit by the uh, linebacker that time, Griffin Lohr, and the pass goes incomplete. And you see Lohr do a good job. Ryan actually chipped the blitzing linebacker Betts and then came free in the flat. But see right there, good job. Just covering your man one-on-one, able to force the incomplete pass. Griffin Lohr, the second leading tackler on the team. Senior linebacker. Quarterback draw, Hanson. Ran out of bounds by McCallop at the chalk. But he got a good chunk. It'll be third down and manageable for Rockers. Can you see the speed of Hanson as he wow, he's fast. gets to the sideline? And I think one of these times he might just turn it up the sideline. Try to take it to the house as you see a good job by the Rockers guys of blocking downfield. Third down and three for the Hawklets, trailing by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. This is a Ryan run. It breaks free. He's got the first down and more. Ryan lowers his head and shoulders and powers across midfield. Seen a lot of tough runs by Aiden Ryan, the junior, who started playing football as a freshman at Bishop Miege. And again, transfer to Rockers. Yeah, and you see the guys up front. You see Sprague sealing that defensive end, allowing that running lane to open up. Hanson. Yeah, it looked like uh, this play, uh, the timing was off or something. Uh, as Ryan going to be uh, thrown for a loss on this play. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of red jerseys in the backfield. and. Hanson lost yardage. Now passing, and the pass is low, incomplete. Forbes, the diving attempt. Now they're going to be pressed into action. Third down and 11 at midfield. And I think it's two down or four down territory here, so you have two downs to pick up the 11 yards. You don't need to panic and try and pick it all up in one play. I definitely think that Miege is going to force Rockers into more passing situations here. Play action on a rollout. Hanson has a man downfield, and the catch cannot be made. Miles Carson was adjusting his body, and in mid-adjustment, he just got one hand on the ball, and it is incomplete. Now fourth down and 11. Well, and that, that was the play that you needed right there. Hanson does, does a good job of getting outside the pocket. Getting that ball up in the air, throwing off of his back foot. See the arm strength there, but not able to bring that that reception in. That would have been huge for Rockhurst. And yeah, he had some steps on Beasley, but I think you got to yep get the offense out on of the field. Yep, they will go for it. They were stopped last time on fourth down. Hanson throwing pass on a deflection is caught. Wow. A fortuitous bounce, and the ball goes to Rockers on their secondary receiver, uh, Mason uh, Tunley here. Let's see what happened here. As Forbes tipped it, and Tunley, right place, right time, able to make the catch. Wow. What a catch. Great concentration there to bring that ball in. New set of downs as Hanson. Some short yardage as he is hit hard on the play. Rasto Sadehi. Involved in the stop. Junior defensive end. Sadehi in the 1,000-pound club, one of their uh, big weight room guys. And... This running play by Ryan to the edge. Ryan with a stiff arm. Ryan fighting down the sidelines. 
He is going to be down, looks like, near the two-yard line on a 35-yard gutsy run by Aiden Ryan. Yeah, great run set up here by, looks like Sprague was pulling around and gets enough of a hat on a hat on Betts as Betts has been pretty active in this run game. But then you see Ryan in open field. He's doing everything he can to try and get to that pylon. And this kid is just getting stronger as the game goes on. Big stiff arm on Johnson. And now first and goal from the two-yard line. Power eye formation. And they'll give it off to Wemhoff. And he surges in. Touchdown, Rockhurst. Colton Wemhoff. As the left side of the line doing a great job. As you saw the push. And the blue heaven there. Uh, the Rockhurst faithful. Rock State celebrating a rushing touchdown by Colton Wemhoff after the 35-yard run by Ryan. Put him on the doorstep, and Wemhoff cashed it. His second rushing touchdown. No, actually, I think that is his first rushing touchdown. He has a receiving touchdown on the year, but that's the first one on the ground for the senior, Colton Wemhoff. As he and Ryan congratulate one another as they were the one-two punch. As they got a nice bounce on a fourth down play and then this big 35-yard run that would be the uh, really the uh, play of the drive. There's the bounce ball that they caught a break on and here's the uh, gritty, gutty run by Aiden Ryan. There's Weimhoff finishing off. But, you know, these running backs for Rockhurst carrying the weight of this offense right now. So you see 13 plays, 89 yards, only three minutes off the clock. And they've got a good little mix right now with Ryan Wimhoff and Ethan Hansen, the quarterback. And again, these guys are not out of this football game as they're able to march down the field, get within a score here in the fourth quarter. An onside kick being the uh, offering here, or is it too early, Johnny? Uh, I definitely think, you know, you've got plenty of time. Yeah, all your timeouts as well, so yeah. Just a strategy question. This will be a return by P.J. McCallop, and now a flag is down, and usually it's an illegal block. As, oh, check that. That was Beasley on the return. I beg your pardon. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a penalty coming up on Bishop Miege for an illegal block on special teams. And these are killers because they make you start so deep in your own territory. Half the distance to the goal. Okay. Block below the waist against Bishop Miege, number 33. So, it's a costly penalty. Half the distance, so we're assuming it's going to be near the 11-yard line from the 22. Well, that's where the penalty happened. Yeah, they're going. Armstrong in the offense. They scrimmage deep in their own territory. Pass to the outside is caught by Jackson. Makes a man miss. Gives them breathing room. And a first down by uh, Taryn Jackson, who has a receiving touchdown tonight. These wide receivers, Jackson and Coppage, so explosive. And Armstrong's completing over 80% of his passes. That's a tough combination to deal with if you're any secondary in the metro area. Backtracks and then loses yardage. Yes. Garcia didn't have much of an opening as that was uh, Sprague there involved in the stop and now he's shaken up. Big guy will walk off. He was the guy involved, 6'8, 265, the junior. 
I think he was the guy that got the penetration. Let's see. Yep, he was there first. Quick pass to the outside. Blocked by Coppage. Setting up a big-time run by Jackson as he runs it out near the 40-yard line. And now we got an injury to uh, Dom Yarborough is down. As he made the stop on the play, but maybe cramping up. Then you go back to this play here, you see Coppage on the outside with the good block. Allowing Jackson to get to the sideline. Well, looks like that calf cramped up on him. I'll get checked out by the Hall of Fame uh, trainer, uh, Paul McGannon. Yeah, there's Paul coming over, big hockey guy. As we uh, get a first down and 10 from the uh, 38. Week five, and we're still seeing cramping. But this is Yarborough's first start tonight. He's a junior safety man. First and 10 from the 38. Gage try to close this game out. Run clock, play keep away. That was the winning recipe for Rockers. And Joe Leggio in his huge rushing game, 24-21. And now the blitz coming on Armstrong, and he'll take off. Ooh, he takes some hard contact as he's able to get it near the uh, 41. He got three yards, but... Uh, he got roughed up on this play. Yeah, and you see Ketting in the backfield. Armstrong sees him. Able to scramble for a little Ooh, bit, but yeah, like that you said. That was a hard hit. I think Sexton really lit him up. It looked like he was just kind of going to the ground and just kind of got knocked around a little bit. As maybe you like to see your quarterback take a slide there, but Armstrong's a tough kid. Pops right back up, ready to go. Still got a positive three on the play. Quick pass near side. And that is Garcia. Receiver out of the backfield. Short yardage did not stay in bounds, so the clock stops. And now leaves a third down and five facing the Stags. got Coppage and Jensen up at the top of your screen. They've been the go-to guys tonight. That's the way Mac is looking. Pass is caught. And it's a first down catch. As uh, Stag strike with their uh, go-to tight end, Dagan Jensen, who's had a huge game tonight. Number 89, the senior. But again, you see the awareness. He knows where the defense is going to sit. She kind of finds the green space, and, and he's been that go-to guy on third, third medium, and, and Armstrong puts it where it needs to be. It's a 15-yard catch, big third down conversion. This guy getting Ivy League looks, excellent in the classroom, an FCS product. Also plays basketball for Coach Zeke, and here's Garcia. Sexton will not let him go. Connor Sexton, defensive lineman, number 58 for Rockers, making the stop. And you see the white hats around that football trying to get that ball loose. Is kind of getting into that time in the game where you're going to have to force a turnover or try and get the momentum swung into your favor. We're getting close to five minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Rockers, when do you start using the timeouts? This is Beasley, and again, Sexton is there. Caught him from behind, and also Ketting was there, but Sexton having a big ball game. The D lineman, the senior, number 58. Watch him come all the way across and get on the legs of Beasley. He beats, beats Jensen off the line of scrimmage, and 
Just able to run down Beasley from behind. If you're Beasley, you got to find a way to get upfield there. But either way, clock's still running. Again, another third down situation. Third down and long. Third down and 13. Armstrong stepping up in the pocket. Deep middle has his man. No, it's dropped. Oh, my goodness. Taron Jackson. The juggling Jackson and the drop. That could have been ball game. Instead, Rocker still has life. Yeah, you know, Jackson's been a go-to guy tonight. You know, you kind of feel for him right there. He's you know, just kind of taken his eyes off. But got to get that ball with the hands. You see that ball hit the shoulder pads. And the ball got in on his body. That's what the problem what was. There. So the drop sends out the punting unit. Dagan Jensen. Low snap. Sends it down the field. Rocker's going to let it hit. Ryan lets it go. Miege keeps it in the field of play, and Rockers will be backed up inside the five-yard line. Good punt there by Jensen as it pins Rockers deep. Let's check in with Leon. Hey, Kevin, after Taron Jackson dropped that pass, so many of his teammates came over and told him, don't worry about it, you'll get him next time. John Holmes ran down the sideline, said the same thing. All his teammates trying to encourage him to... Keep his head in the game for the next uh, opportunity. There's his teammates pumping him up. Keep your chin up. That's right. Uh, this guy's had a nice game tonight. But that would have uh, probably sealed it for Miege had he held on and run it into the end zone. From the three yard line, cutback run, not much doing. Betts. Having a nice game. The inside linebacker also involved in the uh, stop was Schleicher playing both ways. O-line, D-line tonight. Senior, or our junior, I beg your pardon. Jeremy Schleicher. 6'3", 257. They say uh, college prospect. He was second team all league last year. No gain on that last run. Quick pitch it out. And Ryan again takes some heat as he cuts it up there. Hear the pads popping here as Ryan got down low to avoid some uh, contact. And again, Betts is around the football again. It seems like every time Rockers runs the ball, he's in on the tackle. Third down and five from the eight-yard line. Rockers trailing by a touchdown. Fourth quarter, clock running, three and some change. Big play in the ball game. And now the quarterback will pitch it out to Ryan. Ryan gets to the edge. Ryan gets a block. McAuliffe can't make the tackle. And he's finally ridden down from behind at midfield. 42-yard run, Aiden Ryan. Yeah, watch this pitch by Ethan Hansen. I think he tosses it with his right hand. Sees the defender there, does a good job, and yeah, just a little underhand toss, and Aiden Ryan knows what to do once that ball's in his hand. Great cutback right there. Huge pickup for Rockhurst. And now quarterback draw that opens up for Hansen. Good blocking again. McCallop will run him out of bounds. And it looks like uh, enough for a uh, first down. As the Hawklets feeling the blue momentum right now. Moving down the field here at Martell Field, Dixon Dahl Stadium. The uh, bench area wanted a little bit of a late hit here on uh, McCallop. I didn't see any yellow fly, so... Happy with PJ tackling him a little bit out of bounds. So. Here's Ryan again. Ryan spun down. Nice tackle there by Wilson. And you don't see any hurry up here. As these guys know this is going to be the last drive. Clock's ticking under 
almost two minutes now. And you know, we heard Coach Donahoe say after halftime, it's going to come down to the last possession, whoever has that football. Well, this will be Wemhoff, and he'll be thrown for a loss. When do you take your shot to their uh, money man, Miles Carson? Nice play there by Schleicher again, the D lineman for the Stags. Well, the clock's under two minutes. And you still have three timeouts in your back pocket. I think he's thinking we're taking this thing down to zeros. If we score, we're not going to leave much time for Mies. Well, if they do going. throw, I mean, Carson is their top receiver yardage and touchdowns and catches. And now third down and eight as the clock continues to roll. Ryan cut back and he does not get the first down. It'll be fourth down and about a yard. And now Rockers has got to use a timeout here. We'll get an official's timeout probably to mark the football and then Rockers will probably burn the timeout. Ryan. Put, Rockers facing fourth and one. I put Hanson under center and just sneak it. I mean, we've seen this Rockers offensive line get the push all night long. And I don't think you risk uh, a MEH guy being able to slip in the backfield and tackle a running back. Now well, there's the uh, St. Agnes tailgate. Tense times. But they're seeing a great ball game. Tramp, their athletic director, for letting us come in here and broadcast the Catholic Clash 2022. Living up to Billing, going right down to the wire. Rockers will be facing fourth down and one. Clock at just over a minute. They're down by a touchdown. There's their go-to wide receiver, top of the screen, Carson. Johnny's calling a quarterback run here to try to, he needs to get the first down. But Ryan's been a tough runner. We saw that uh, 42-yard run earlier in this drive. Drive that started at the three. Can Rockers go 97 and tie it up? They give it off to Ryan. He's got the first down as he mows over his own blocker. Breaks free. Ryan inside the 15. And Ryan is a tough tackle right now for Bishop Miege as clock stopped at 105 as they moved the chains and Rockers moving down the field. Number seven there is put two hands on the ball. Yeah, stay with the hot hand. Picking up that fourth down. Giving his team a chance here to tie this football game up. And this will be the other back. It looks like Wemhoff is in the ball game. Nope, that's Ryan. Beg your pardon. Check that Ryan. Boy, he is working hard tonight. He is going to sleep well after this ball game. He's going to be a tired puppy as he's really uh, been toting the rock tonight. Had some big runs. He got three on that last run. And now we're down to 41 seconds. Next week, big Missouri matchup. The ranked teams, Lee Summit North and Ray Peck in a square off. Teams were in the same conference last year, so they played a conference game and then a playoff game, and Lee Summit North won both those games. They were some good ball games, so we'll do it again in 2022. Lee Summit North at Ray Peck next Friday night, 7 o'clock on the High B High School Game of the Week. Well, Ryan has a full back in front of him, Vince White. Second down and seven. Play action. Hanson. Throwing to the end zone, incomplete. And like the receiver that time uh, was a Coppinger. We almost got the tip drill uh, 2.0. We saw that one fourth down play where the receiver tipped it and the receiver behind it caught it. And Coppinger going up. And, you and see yeah, there's the second receiver in the back of the end zone. 
And you see Hanson put that ball up to where only his receiver is going to catch the ball, but almost to his fortune, he had another teammate behind him. Almost like Kevin said, to haul that in. That would have been the heck of a catch. Third down and seven. Quick pitch it out. Cut back. And Ryan breaking a tackle. Knocked the safety down. Hayward came up to make the stop and ended up on the ground. And it's going to be... Where are they spotting this football officially at the four? So it's going to be fourth down. Ryan is delivering some blows all the while rushing the football for the Hawklets as we get the final timeout by Rockers as they'll be facing a fourth down. And what is it, Johnny? A two? Watch Ryan here. The strong safety, number 42, is going to come up here and try to deliver a blow on Ryan. Boom. Yeah, just able to spin out of there. That's Betts who's been... Well, Betts got the, knocked down, but also the strong safety. But this is a tough runner. Aiden Ryan. Maybe they over-pursued a little bit there. Well, he, Ryan does a good job of staying on his feet. He's kind of backpedaling out of that spin move, able to pick up an extra three or four yards. We know the, the strength of this offensive line's at left side. See if they stay on the ground here. Well, they're saying actually fourth and one, Johnny. So here's your ball game, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ryan, and he's blown up. I don't think he got it. And Miege is going to win it. Somebody got down low. It looked like Cusick is the guy celebrating the most. And Ryan is denied on fourth down and one as Miege comes up with a defensive stop, denying them the 97-yard game-tying drive. And you see that face on Coach Donahoe, the frustration. Let's see, I thought it was 52. Jack Baird. No, Baird, number six. Crashing down the outside linebacker. Jungle Jack. Yeah, Ryan just didn't have a chance. He's got tripped up just enough, but big time stop there by the uh, Bishop Miege defense. As these guys were pushed all the way the goal line, but able to get the stop when needed. A snap taken, and the clock going to run out as Armstrong still walking around with the ball. Clock still not run out, but Rockhurst is in handshaking mode. So that is your ball game. Zeroes on the clock, 28-21. And now that is series win. This is the 33rd game. That's the eighth win for Miege, but it ends a two-game Rockers win streak. And now in the modern version that started in 2018, well, it's a uh, 3-2 Rockers lead, but a big win for Miege on their home field. Rockers going to regret two turnovers tonight, Johnny, and uh, a big fourth down stop. Well, actually, a couple of big fourth down stops. We saw one earlier in the second half that they were able to turn into points. And... Yeah, you see there, Aiden Ryan with 258 yards in the running game. I mean, just a heck of a game by him. And Armstrong, 340 for Miege in the passing game. So give credit to both those guys. It's, you know, it's a hard, hard-fought game here. And, you know, both coaches said it was going to come back to one possession. Let's check in with Leon with Coach Holmes. Winning in, Coach, here for Bishop Miege, John Holmes. And, well, how about that one, the way this one came to an end? Heck of an ending. Um, two great programs, two great teams. Our defense was asked to make one play. Um, we did it. We knifed a couple guys in there and made the stop in the backfield. Aiden Ryan's a heck of a back that was running for a lot of yards. And to be able to stop them doing the game they want to do. Last year, we lost the game because we couldn't do that. And this year, we won the game because we could. You went over and talked to Aiden Ryan specifically. Yeah. What did you, you tell oh, yeah. I told him he's a great football player. You know, he was here his freshman year. Um, so we know how good he is. And he's 
he showed that tonight, that's for sure. Your defense obviously came up with a huge stop. But how about your offense tonight? And Mac Armstrong, he's so accurate and had so many different weapons he found. Yeah, um, you know, Dagan Jensen had a big-time game for us, number 89. Um, you know, Isaiah Coppage had success early. Taron Jackson, Tommy Wright. So we knew one of those guys was going to have to come open and make plays, and Mac did a heck of a job finding those guys for us. Energy on your sidelines almost contagious, even if you're not involved with either program here. Obvious question of how big was this victory for you guys? Oh, it's a huge victory for us. I, I, I'm not a historian, but I don't know if we've ever beat these guys at home in a long, long time. Um, I know 72 beat them on the road. We beat them on the road in 19. So to get to do this on our home field, uh, especially honoring our 1972 50-year team, that was just so big for us. All right, I think you got some players who want to celebrate yeah. with you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you, Leon. I appreciate it. Go Stags, baby. John Holmes, everybody. Big, big win for the Stags tonight over Rockhurst. 28-21 is your final. Miege going to 4-0 and on the year, and Rockers will drop to 1-4 and with the loss tonight. Final score once again, 28-21. Miege at home, finally beating Rockers. Ivy postgame coming up next. Coach Holmes addressing his team after a 28-21 victory over rival Rockers in the Catholic Clash 2022. Exciting game tonight, Johnny. You had the great atmosphere, the tailgating, the great crowd, and then we saw a great game tonight as well. Yeah, I don't think we expected anything less. I think these are two really well-coached football teams. You see it comes down to the wire. Uh, you know, if you're Bishop Miege, you know, you're still trying to continue to stay undefeated one week at a time. Uh, we know the gauntlet they're going to face in the EKL. And if you're Rockers, you know, you, you've got nothing to hang your head about. You, you fought all the way to the, the whistle. You played physical football. And, you know, you just hope to keep these guys healthy and keep this thing uh, moving forward. Thanks again to Mark Kellerman for feeding our uh, crew in the uh, tailgate over there at St. Agnes. Thanks to our ADs, Joe Schramp and Michael Dirks of Rockers. Thanks to the coaches, John Holmes and Kelly Dono, our producer, Joe Novacek for Johnny Beck, Leon Liebel, and our entire Spectrum Sports Broadcasting crew. This is Kevin Weick saying so long from Dixon Dahl Stadium. Bishop Miege High School, our final once again in the 2022 Catholic Clash. Miege 28, Rockers 21. Good night from Roland Park.